my any Sorry. <laughs> no, that's not, not your fault. If one changes my Sashani coins for a seller, Beit Shammai says coins for a wholesaler. But Beit Hillel says one silver shekel and one uh, shekel coin. When Beit Meir says one may not redeem silver and produce with silver, but the Kachaman permitted. If one changes a seller of my Sashani in Yerushalayim, Beit Shammai says coins for the wholesaler, but Beit Hillel says one shekel silver and one shekel coins. The deliberators before the sages say for three dinners silver and for one dinner copper coins. The Rakiva says for three dinners silver and for a copper, uh, a quarter copper coins. Reb Tarfin says four aspers and silver. And Reb Shammai says uh, leave him, let him leave it in a shop and eat in the equivalent. If so, one of, if some of one's sons were unclean and some clean, and he lays down the cellar and says, let the cellar be in exchange for what the clean drink, thus the clean and the unclean may drink from one jar. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, Perek Gimel. Lo yomar adam lechavero ha lesapero sa'elu li Yerushalayim lechalek. So he's got, so we've got some, some stuff that we want to take up to, uh, to Yerushalayim to eat. So he's got his, uh, so he's got his work and says, "Listen, take the stuff, uh, stuff up to Rishalayim for me, and then we'll eat it, uh, and then you can eat it with me together." Okay. Okay, and then we can, then we can divide the produce in Rishalayim. What's the problem with this? Is that it's, he's giving Master Shani his payment, saying, "You slip the, you slip the produce, and I'll give you some when we get to Rishalayim." That's a, that's a transaction. You can't do that with Master Shani. Right. Okay, but what he can do, Ela Omer Lo Ha'alein Shenochrem Venishtem BiRishalayim. You can say to him, bring them up and we'll have and we'll have a suda together in Yerushalayim. Which is basically inviting him to come and sit at his meal. And, and that is no longer a, tr- a transaction. That's just a social invitation. So he's not paying him with the food. He's just um, giving him, he's just saying, come, come, to, uh, come to have a meal with me in Yerushalayim. Right. Yeah, your cat's having a fit in the background over there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, don't worry, don't worry. He's just entertaining. Is that the little one, <laughs> little black and white one. Yeah, the little new one, the broken eye. Okay. Aval nosnim ze laze matnas chinam. The Mishnah mentions again. It's not entirely clear why, because we've said this before. But um, you're permitted to give a free gift to uh, to somebody else of uh, of Master Shani. So you can't you can't trade it, but you can give it as a gift. Okay. Uh, Mishnah base. Ein lochin chuma vakesif masa sheni mipne shehu mama et ba achila soi verabi shiman matir. Okay. So now comes a kohen. The kohen comes to Yerushalayim and he's got masa sheni as well. He says, Oh, you know what? Let me use this to purchase some chuma because I can eat chuma as well. So it says the Mishnah, you can't do that. Why? Because masa sheni is edible by anyone. Right. And if you and if you now trade it in for uh, for chuma. Then, then you, you're you're reducing the number of people who can eat it, and that's not allowed. Mm-hmm. But Rabbi Shimon says uh, says no. It sure it, it should be permitted, and he gives his story here. Amar lehem Rabbi Shimon, ma'im hekel beziv cheshlamim shehu mevia nidei pigul venosar etame lo nakel betchuma. He says I don't understand. We have a we have a and in, in fact it's, it's highly recommended that you should use your masisheni money to buy a behema. And bring it as a bring it as shlamim in the base of mikdash, okay. Now that's that, that's great, but what's going to happen? What, what you're doing over here is you're putting a restriction on yourself. If you don't eat those uh, the, the shlamim within with, within two days and one night, then it's going to become pigle. It could become no side. You, you bring you you're possibly going to end up destroying the masachani, and yet we still allow it. So why on earth shouldn't I be allowed to? Shouldn't the kohen be allowed to uh, tra- use his masachani to buy truma, which doesn't even have a time limit? Okay. Amru lo the Chachamim answered him, No, you're wrong. Ma im im heikel bezib cheshlamim shehein mutar in nazarim. But the the fact is that even if you're putting a time limit on you, you haven't re- reduced the people who can eat it. And in in, in either case, you have to be tahor. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But but nonetheless, in principle, any person is allowed to eat the is allowed to eat the shlamim. Okay. Nakel betchuma shehi shehi asur Why should we? Why should we uh, be makil and the lime to purchase chuma, which is uh, which is asur to to zarim? 
So basically restating their position that it's um, that we don't care if there's a time limit. What's important is that you don't want to reduce the number of people who can who can eat it. Okay. Mishnah Gimel. Mi shahayulo maos Yerushalayim betarich lahem. So now a guy has come to Yerushalayim and he's uh, and he's got Master Shani money in his pocket. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, he's, and he comes into the hotel, and the hotel says, "Okay, that will be uh, 100 shekels, uh, please, sir." And he feels in his other pocket for his chulin money, and Oive, he doesn't have any. He, he left his chulin money at home. All he's got is the master shani money. He's got lots of it. He's got enough to cover his hotel bill, but suddenly he he needs to. Um, he, uh, he he's got to pay his 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 chulin bill, and he can't pay it with master shani money. Right. So, what can he do? Okay, Paris, but he's got a friend over there who's got uh, chulin, who's got chulin fruit. And, and he says, so he says to his friend, listen, can I redeem my money on your Paris? He says, okay, I'm redeeming my money on your on your Paris over there, and that they're now Masishani. So he's, if his friend is willing, he says, okay. That's fine. Uh, so now he's so now he'll go home and eat his 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 Masa Shani in uh, in Tara. Okay. And now the, the money is turned into Fulin and he can pay his hotel bill with it. Wait, so he, he he exchanged the, the Masa Shani money for the produce from his friend? Basically he, he just he didn't even exchange it. He just was Mahalel the the money on the on the pro, on the produce. And the friend gave him the produce and he ate the no, the produce. friend didn't give him the produce. The friend kept his own produce. All that he did oh, was he said, okay. okay, I've got I've got chulin over here. Well, it doesn't have to be produce even. It could have, it could be chicken. Right. And right. Or whatever it is, he, he can he can just say, look, I'm I'm gonna eat this now. Do you want to redeem your money on this? And I'll just eat it as Master Shani. No problem. Okay. All right. So so he's passed the Master Shani Kadusha onto his friend. His friend gets the schuss of eating the Master Shani. And he gets the chulin money and now he can pay his and now he can pay his hotel bill. Because that Master Shani was changed into Kulin. So that's uh that's, that's right. how do that. Okay. Exactly. Right. Okay. Good. Good. okay. But but the Mishnah gives a warning. But mm -hmm. you shouldn't do this with the with an Amaaretz. Because the Amaaretz who's got the produce, we, 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 you got, you're putting a Mechshul in front of him because he's not so careful about Tuma and Tara. So don't so don't don't put him in a position where he's where he's liable to eat the Master Shani Batuma. Right. Okay. Okay. Unless we're talking about Master Shani shall demai. Remember, demai you have to take off Master Shani and Chumas okay. Master. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so if it's demai, then already it's a it's specific, and uh, and that's and there you don't have to worry too much because because uh, you got you got two spakers. Maybe this is really Matukan, and therefore this is the, the, what you think is Master Shani is is actually is actually chulin money anyway. And and on the other Safek, it's the the Amaaretz is most Amaaretz are, are actually careful about Tuma and Tara. It's just that we suspect for a minority who are not. So mm -hmm. you've still got a so you've got a, a, sort of a, a double Safek over here that uh, um, that you don't so that you don't have to worry about uh, about the Amaaretz. Okay. Okay. Something came um, up oh something else we're gonna go we're moving along right now we're moving along we're on to mass uh, just hey base okay something came up yesterday and I, I wanted to ask you about it we know from what we learned if I'm correct that if you want to bring a Corbin and and um, the, the behavior just gave birth to a, a calf you can, I can't calf be be used as a Corbin for eight days that's correct correct it, it has to wait eight days before you can bring right. it if you have if you have, if I'm correct, if you have, uh, if uh, uh, Hamid gave, gave both birth to a calf, that you can sh just, not for a Corbin, just general, and, and you can check it before eight days, or you have to wait for the, the mother. Day, the mother, no, the, the, the calf. Um, yeah, for, 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 for chulin meat, you're saying, just, just stand right. for chulin, so yeah, that, that, that's fine. That's fine. I thought maybe I, there was something. No, it's, only for, it's only for Ms. Bayach that you need to wait a week. Week. But there was some somewhere something about you have to wait for them able to be able to walk on their own, or something. I think that was. Uh, so, so this was. Um, I think this was a, a din that we discussed in a in a in a shkuta. If a, if you shechted a pregnant cow, and inside was it was a living um, inside was a living fetus. Right. Okay. 
So there was an opinion among the Tanaim that, um, I mean, there was one opinion that said that this, this animal is walking around, is walking, um, is walking shechted. So like five years later, if you want, you can come and shoot it and, and it'll be kosher. Because it was shechted with its mother already. You can't eat it alive because it's still Avi Menachai. So, but right. you can kill it in any way you want. It doesn't need a shechita anymore. And there was another opinion that said, no, it, it's, it's only considered shechita while it's, while it's still you know, newly born. Mm. But once it gets up on its feet, it, it needs a shechita. Yeah, that, is that what you're referring to? Yeah, I think that, that right, right, okay. I couldn't remember yeah. it too well. Okay, all right, Maestras, we have uh, Dalit Aleph. Uh, Maestras, we have Hay Base. Huh? In, in, in Maestras? Maestras, Hay Base, yeah. Right, the tissues, I got the tissue here. Oh, these tissues are going to make me crazy. I got a number of these. Now, you should get proper bookmarks, not tissues. That way, you know. I know. Okay. Um, hey, base. Hey, base. If one uproots turnips or radishes from his own and plants them in his own for seed, he is liable because that is their threshing floor. When onions strike roots in the upper story, they become clean from uncleanliness. If debris fell on them, they are uncovered. They are as if planted in the field. A person may not sell his produce when it has reached the tithing season to someone who is not trustworthy in regard to Maestras, nor in the seventh year to someone who is not trustworthy in regard to the seventh year. But if it ripened, he may take the ripe ones and sell the rest. A person may not sell his straw, olive peel, or grape residue to someone who is not trustworthy in regard to Maestras, for him to extract the juice from them. If he extracted them, it is, he is liable to Maestras, but he is exempt from Truma, because he who sets aside Truma has in mind the broken, the sides, and what is inside the raw, the straw. Okay. You know, it, it's, not bad. It's, not bad when, hmm? it's, it's not bad when I have just one tissue in there, because I know where I am. <laughs> okay, where we, we uh, Maestras? We're Truma's Truma's Hazein now. Hey, um, over here, okay. Hey, Zion. If a saw of Truma fell into a hundred, or one lifted it out and another fell in, and he lifted it out and another one fell in, it is permitted until the Truma exceeds the Chulin. If a saw of Truma fell into a hundred, and before one could lift it out, another fell in, it's forbidden. Reb Shimon permits this. If a saw of truma fell into a hundred and one ground them and they became less, just as the chulin became less, so the truma becomes less and it is permitted. If a saw of truma fell into less than a hundred and one ground them and they increase, just as the chulin increased, so the truma increased and it's forbidden. If it is known that the chulin wheat is superior to that of truma, it is permitted. If a saw of truma fell into less than a hundred and chulin fell in there afterwards, it's after, if accidentally it is permitted, if intentionally it's forbidden. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. They are trusted they are trusted concerning wheat, but if they are not trusted concerning flour or bread, they are trusted concerning this um, Sarah of rice, but they're not trusted concerning it, either raw or cooked. They are trusted concerning beans, but they are not trusted concerning pounded beans, either raw or cooked. They are trusted concerning oil when they say that it is of Misa Ani, but they are not trusted when they say it is of Nechuf Olives. They are trusted concerning raw greens, but they are not trusted when they are cooked, and unless he had a small quantity, for it is a custom of the householder to take out from his stew pot. So the whole so the whole thing of these Mishnayas is like we 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 gave a blanket uh, heter to to Aniyim, even though they're Amiya Aret, that we, we that we can trust them about uh, about whether or not uh, uh, these things require Chuma and Masa because all the Matanas la Aniyim, the Leket Shikha Paya um and uh, and Masa Ani, they don't need any further tikkun. At all. Okay. Right. So, so we can believe them if, if the Ani wants to sell it to us or give it to us, and we, we can say, okay, we, we trust you that the that this is not tevil. Where we where we would, but that's only if it, if the thing that we're talking about is something that's plausible that he would have as uh, as as master Ani. So if if he's giving you something that's already been cooked or um, something that just doesn't seem right that the Balabais would would give him this as a as one of the gifts of, to the Aniim, 
uh, then we then we don't believe him. One may not give the poor from the threshing floor less than half a cob of wheat and a cob of barley. But Mayer says half a cob, a cob and a half of spelt and a cob of dry figs or a mana of fig cake. Rabbi Kiva says half a half, half a log of wine. And Rabbi Kiva says one quarter of a quarter of oil. Rabbi Kiva says one eighth and another produce and any other produce. Rabbi Shol, Abba Shol says sufficient to sell them and purchase it with food for two meals. In that first, in that first, um, in the first uh, Mishnah, I remember. I'm pretty sure we talked about this. That we never, I never saw rice growing here in Israel, unless they're doing it. Yeah, now. I know. Uh, it's in, it's interesting. Uh, we should actually check that out on Wikipedia and see if uh, see if we actually do grow rice anyway. Yeah, but I know that we we, we said this in in Shvius, that we've got to suspect the about rice being being grown in Israel. Yeah, it's, so it's it's pretty clear from the Mishnah that they did grow rice, but it's a very water intensive crop. So it seems strange right. that. Uh, at that time, they wouldn't have the, the facility that we have to, to do this. So Yeah. Okay, Dalet, Dalet Hay. A Baharis the size of a gris has a strip of nega extending from it. If the strip is in two hairs, if two hairs wise, it connects to the Baharis and to white hair or to expansion, but not to a section of living skin. Two Baharis have a strip of nega concerning, con connecting them. If the strip is two hairs wide, they combine, and if not, they do not combine. A baharis the size of a gris contains living skin the size of a lentil, and on the living skin there is white hair. If the healthy skin disappeared, the baharis is tummy because of white hair. The white hair fell out. The baharis is tummy if because of living skin. Rabbi Shimon considers it tahor because the baharis did not cause the hair to co change color. The baharis and the living skin it contains together equal the size of a gris, and there is white hair and there is white hair inside the baharis. If the living skin disappeared, it's tummy because of the white hair. If the white hair fell out, it is tummy because of the living skin. Reb Shimon considers it tower because the hair was not changed by the harris the size of a gris. However, he agrees that if there is a gris of nega where the white hair grows, it's tummy. If a harris had both living skin and an expansion, if subsequently the living skin disappeared, the nega is still tummy because of expansion. If the expansion disappeared, the nega is still tummy because of living skin. The same rule applies to white hair and to expansion. If the nega went away and returned at the end of the week, it is treated as if remained unchanged. If the nega went away uh, and it returned after it was declared tahor, it is examined anew. If the nega was bright and became dull, or if it was dull and became bright, it is treated as if it remained unchanged as long as it does not become less bright than the four shades. If the nega contracted and then expanded, or expanded and then contracted, Rabbi Akiva renders it tame and the Chaman render it tahor. A Baharis, the size of a green. Okay, we're done. That's, That's it. it. That's three. Right? No. Oh, Abos. All right. <laughs> Abos Gimel Aleph. Gimel Aleph. Akiva said, Ma uh, Mahalel says, right, Akiva ben Mahalel says, consider three things and you will not come into the grip of skin. Sin. Knowing whence you came, whither you go, and before whom you are destined to give judgment and accounting. Whence you came from a future drop. Uh, whither you go to a place of dust, worms, or maggots. And before whom you are destined to give judgment and accounting before the king who reigns over kings, the holy one, blessed is he. Rabbi Kanina, the deputy Cohen Godol, says, pray for the wayfarer of the government because the people did not fear it, a person would swallow his fellow alive. Rabbi Kanina ben Trajan says, when two people are sitting together and there are no words of Torah between them, this is a session of scorners. As it is stated, in the session of scorners, he did not sit. But two are sitting together and there are words of Torah between them, divine presence dwells between them, as it is stated. Those who fear Hashem spoke to each other, and Hashem listened and heard, and a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear Hashem and give thought for his name. I already know too, from where do I know that even one person who sits and occupies himself with Torah, that the Holy One, blessed is he, determines a reward for him, as it is stated that one sit in solitude and whisper, for he has taken in reward for it. Rabbi Shimon says, if three people sit at the same table and did not speak words of Torah upon it, it is as if they um, they ate from offerings of the dead, as it is stated, for all tables are full of vomit and filth without the omnipresent. But three who sit at the same table and spoke words of Torah upon it, it is as if they ate from the table of the omnipresent. 
Blessed is he as it is stated, and the angel said to me, this is the table that is before Hashem. Okay. And finally, Yivamos. Yud Ches. A boy nine years and one day old who cohabitated with his Yavama and then cohabitated with her co-wife, he has disqualified them to himself. Rabbi Shimon says he did not disqualify. If a boy nine years old, one nine years and one day old cohabited with his Yavama and then died, she performs Kalitza but may not be taken in Yibam. If he has married a woman and then died, she is exempt. A boy nine years old and one day old who cohabited with his Yavama and then after reaching adulthood he married another woman and died, if, if, if he was not intimate with the first, I'm sorry, if he was not intimate with the first one after reaching adulthood, the first one performs Kalitza but may not be taken in Yubam, while the second one may either perform Kalitza or be taken in Yubam. Reb Shimon says he may perform Yubam with ever, with ever which he prefers and must then perform Kalitza with the other one. It is the same whether he is aged nine years and one day or aged 20 and has not grown two hairs. One may marry the relatives of uh, one may marry the relative of the of the woman he raped or seduced. If he raped or seduced her relatives after he married her, he is liable. He may, man may marry the woman raped or seduced by his father, or the woman raped and seduced by his son. Maybe Huda says prohibits the woman raped or seduced by his father. Because if there was no condition then the Isra is not Chal. Yeah. It's only, uh, only, so it only becomes a, a, um, the wife of a, of a relative if it's actually his wife, not if, uh, if, he, uh, if, he, if he seduced or raped her. Okay. okay. Zerhol. I wonder how this Yuvamas would go over in today's world. If, you know. like, like most of Halacha, not very well. Not right. <laughs> right. Not very well. I can see the, woman, the, the woman's... Uh, you know, equal rights starting up right away. You know, mm-hmm. uh, have a great Shabbos. Enjoy. Good and Kodesh. Friday, good and Kodesh. Great Shabbos. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. No, I'll see you. Uh, wait, tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow's Friday. I, I can't keep track of the days. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> no, it's really terrible. It's uh, Tuesday. I always Monday. I always think it's Tuesday or Sunday. I think it's Tuesday. All right. Anyway, have a good one. Thank you. It's Bye.